welcome, welcome, welcome to Open Mic Night here at the Camel, our inaugural show. Give it up for yourself! Come on, other comics! I know it's literally only comics, and I should have unwound that mic cord before I got up here, but tonight is about learning things. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Senator Joe Biden, everybody, come on! Give it up for him! Hell yeah, he's here! And lovely Mrs. Biden as well. We're so happy to have you. Oh my Doctor. goodness. Doctor, of course, Doctor and Doctor. We're so delighted to have you join us here tonight. Welcome to the very first reintroduction to the scene of the show of the Comedy Camel, everybody! I don't know the name of this show. My name is Will Miner. I will be filling in for our previously acquired host, Steve Jones. Steve Jones, the host who was supposed to be here tonight, has COVID-19. That's really weird to me. I didn't know you could still get that. I thought that was done. Joe Biden lied to me. Ooh, I'm mad at that. Not as bad as I am at uh, Steve Jones or bowing out. I don't know, he like ate a bat or pangola or something. He got sick. So Steve's not gonna be here tonight, but I'm gonna do just my darndest to fill his mighty big hilarious shoes and do my best to make each and every one of you laugh. He hosts a room over at Home Sweet Home. He's one of Richmond's finest comedians. Please put your hands together for Jacob McFadden. Give it up your Will Miner, everybody. Will Miner. Here for Will Miner. Will Miner is too fucking loud. There's too loud of a way to start the show. Everyone's, it's only five o'clock. It's too fucking loud, Will. Will, how are you, Will? Will, get off your phone. Will, it's going to be okay, Will. Hello, come on in. Do you know Will? Will's too fucking loud. That's what I say. Come on in, guys. Here we go. Hey, how you doing? All right. I don't know if you guys saw, but there's a very naughty Democratic hopeful here in the state. Have you guys seen this? If you don't live in District 57 like I do, you may not know that one of the Democrats running for office is into doing porn. Amateur porn. Which means they may have finally found the P-tape, everybody. The infamous P-tape. That's a joke, but of course there are several videos of her saying if I get a hundred dollar tip, I will pee on my husband right now, which is a sort of inspiring language you don't see from modern politicians. And I'm glad that she's out there. Uh, she did have one, she does have a video where she says, hey, if I get, uh, if I, I, we have a pizza coming, if I can get $60 in tips, I will flash the delivery person. And I appreciate that because I love transparency in government. It's also a tape where her and her husband get another guy in, they do a little uh, DP, that stands for double penetration, which once again, you gotta love efficiency in government. That's just more efficient. It's two men with one whole, all right. She did, uh, Susanna Gibson is her name. She did come out, she said, hey, this is an invasion of my privacy, despite the fact that she published them. She said, it's an invasion of my privacy, which goes to prove one of my old theories. All nurses are crazy. She's a nurse. Uh, and if you don't believe nurses are crazy, I remind you, I just say, go back in time to uh, the COVID pandemic when the TikTok nurses were doing dances outside of dead people's rooms. That's nuts, all right? No one likes that, COVID's back. We're all a little freaked out about it, that's cool. She runs these ads nonstop, you can't turn on Hulu without seeing these ads, she says, hey, I don't believe a government bureaucrat should come between a patient and her doctor. Now, of course, chatterbait tips are taxable income. So she does believe an IRS agent should become a woman and her husband. All right. I guess we all know who's going to win in Henrico. It is, it is funny, though, because it like, it's silly, but it's also like serious because it's a potential crime so you go to federal prison for because it, it could be a campaign donation violation. She says after she already took... By the way, she was still doing these after she started running for office. Uh, she said, uh, hey, donate to me now. It's going to go to a really good cause. And if that is her campaign, that's what they call dark money. <laughs> Unless you're the delivery driver who p brought the pizza, then it's called sticky money. Very sticky money. That's a joke about coming on money. Is that clear? <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a kid now, I have a son, and I, I, you know, my wife and I were raising the kid together. I think I'm a better parent than my wife. Um, not, you know, inherently, it's just because my wife is more limited in the skill set she has, right? My wife, I have more patience. My wife does the same thing all wives do. When my kid's throwing a hissy fit in public, she'll go, if you don't get it, we're gonna leave. You have three seconds. One, 
two, two and a half. And now we all have to leave the fucking brewery because someone won't stop standing on the table. But as a dad, I have a socket set. I've got more numbers to pull from. So I'm like one, two, two and nine sixteenths, two and 10 58ths, two and 23 millimeters. That's right, we're a bilingual home. <laughs> Uh, I recently saw this video online. I like to go online. I like to watch fight videos, and I like to watch uh, embarrassing public spectacle videos, and I found a combination of my favorite things the other day. I found a furry fight video. There's a, there's a guy. He's at the beach. A furry comes up with a megaphone and bashes his face in. Very funny. But I do like to imagine, so I looked it up. I said, what the hell? Why are these furries assaulting people on the beach? And the furry says, because the guy he beat up was a Nazi. And so I looked up the guy's side of the story. And he said, I'm not a Nazi. Don't know who to believe. But I do like to try and put myself in other people's shoes. And this is the very first time in my life I've ever thought to myself, if I were that guy, I would hope I was a Nazi. Because otherwise, I'm just a guy who got the shit kicked out of me by a fox with a three foot wide fur head. For no reason. And that's actually more embarrassing than being a member of Germany's fastest rising political party in the 1930s. <laughs> All right, everybody, I was going to end with something else, but I'm out of time. I'm in a good mood. You know, I don't normally come down to this part of town, but uh, I had to leave work early today because today I just found out that my wife is having a second son. We're having a baby boy. So, thank you, thank you. I'll let you know I spent three years fighting cancer and never once got a fucking round of applause, but my wife gets pregnant and now it's like, hooray! So, awesome. Thanks everybody, I've been Jacob McFadden. Cancer survivor and soon to be secondary father of two. Come on, keep it going for Jacob McFadden, everybody. And keep those hands a clapping for your next performer. I am so Let's go ahead and bring up our second performer of the evening, the one, the only, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nate Bechtel. We doing good? We having fun? Yeah. Camel, when I say butt, can you say chug? Butt. Chug. Butt. Chug. Butt. Chug. butt. Chug. All right, now put your arms in the air. All right, that's good. Most of you knew not to listen to a man in clown face. Correct decisions. had to say goodbye to my dog. He's going off to college. Yeah, he's going through a bitter divorce and he's trying to reconnect with his son. He's gonna have a classes struggle with the dean. I don't know how he got past admissions, but he is one charming son of a bitch. Folks! Any gamblers in the house tonight? Yeah, gambling's fun. I keep losing things at the ponies because I bet on the Shetlands. Mm -hmm. Did you all know there's a website that's gonna let people to start bet on the Special Olympics? Yeah, doubling down's gonna take on a whole new meaning. I'm gonna sit in that one. I don't know what kind of sick individual you have to be, though, to watch the Special Olympics to make money. Some of us do it for the love of the game. I'm very excited about the autistic event. That's where you have to finish a game of Warhammer 40,000 while describing your favorite movie. Mm -hmm. I'm just really impressed with anybody, though, who wakes up with the urge to race or be the best at anything. Because I'll call off of work because I accidentally ate an edible chocolate instead of my normal breakfast chocolate. Because I'm in the worst shape of my life. I'm in terrible shape. 
I threw up after sex recently. Do you know what it's like to have to go, it's not you, I don't do cardio. I'm not making it to the end of a horror movie. I'm dying in the cold open. The lady from the vomit sex is gonna come back and find me on her bathroom floor with my throat slit. I'm wearing rabbit ears and colorful eggs are shoved up my ass. Cause we're doing a, a, an Easter slasher folks. And the bunny's the villain. Cause I wouldn't do that to Jesus. I'm not gonna make him machete teens. I wouldn't do that to Yeshua. He seemed like a cool dude. He got executed by the state. He beat up money lenders. And he hung out with sex workers. That's workers. Mary was pretty good, but Thomas could jerk the soul out of you for a loaf of bread. Now some of you may be thinking to yourself, a loaf of bread, Thomas, why are you undervaluing your skill set like that? And you're not thinking economically. He's gonna bring that loaf of bread back to JC, and now he's got 40 loaves of bread. And that's how you turn a profit on the profit. Folks! I miss milkmen! We used to have a standing, uniformed, professional cuckolding force in this country. What happened to us? A man used to be able to afford three to four secret families on nothing more than a traveling salesman's paycheck. And I can barely afford an OnlyFans subscription. That's three to four custom videos of a beautiful woman telling me it'll be okay. And then she sings the Jurassic Park theme song. And I forget about climate change. My name's Nate Bechtel. This has been a set. And Nate Bechtel, everybody. If you enjoyed his comedy, please donate to his OnlyFans, the clown that gets down, Richmond's clown that gets down. He's on, you can find him on OnlyFans. Welcome, welcome, band. We'd love to see you guys. You are not gonna wanna miss your next performer. We love, we absolutely love her. We think, oh, she's one of the best comedians here in Richmond. Put your hands together for Leela Humans. Hello. Um, Nate, where'd Nate go? Oh, Nate. Just a little advice. It's okay to call out if you take too much laxative. But you don't have to tell the whole room. It's all, <laughs> just to let you know. Um, I recently celebrated a birthday and it was kind of a milestone, kind of a big deal. In case all of you were wondering, I finally hit that new era. I am finally bird enthusiast age. <laughs> it's true, yeah. My daughter gave me a birdhouse and it has a video camera in it and I was actually pretty excited about that um, until I put it up and really it's just been non-stop videos of squirrels, just squirrels over and over. Like, I just, the notifications pop up on my phone and one after the other, it's squirrel butt. Squirrel butt, squirrel butt. Every once in a while, the squirrel will turn around and face the camera, and then it's squirrel nipple, squirrel nipple. I'm starting to think I somehow like subscribed to a weird squirrel only fans account or something. <laughs> Especially when I click on the videos and it asks me for my ID. Like, I don't know where my daughter got that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask her. Yeah, um, I've been pretty busy lately. Um, I'm not at home a lot, and so my housekeeping has really kind of fallen apart. Um, so I started watching um, cleaning TikToks. You all look like cleaning TikTok people. <laughs> yeah, they're fascinating. I have watched hours and hours of women like scrubbing their showers, cleaning grout, um, pulling the, the glass out of the doors on their oven, things like that. Just hours. Scrolling, scrolling. 
and my house has not gotten any cleaner. It hasn't helped me a bit. Um, basically, it's not that my house is dirty. It's more that it's small and it gets very cluttered. So I need some kind of a system to help me organize. And I know they're out there. I need to find one. Like, I know years ago there was Marie Kondo. Do you remember that? She was that lady. She would tell you to pick up your stuff, hold it in your hand, and ask if it sparks joy. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, that was, I just, didn't feel like that was for me. I feel like if I did that system, I would end up throwing away all of my cleaning supplies. I'd end up with nothing but like my bed, a television, a couple bottles of wine, and my son would be at Goodwill trying to find someone to give him a ride home. I just felt like it wasn't for me, but there is a new one that I'm kind of thinking about. It's called Swedish Death Cleaning. Um, I don't know if you've heard about that. There's a show on Netflix. And Swedish death cleaning is similar to Marie Kondo, except for when you hold up the things, you don't ask if they spark joy. You think, is this going to be a pain in the ass for my relatives to get rid of if I die suddenly? And I think that's very interesting. I like that. It's like Marie Kondo with a dose of existential dread. It kind of makes you live like you're dying, but not like an inspirational Tim McGraw song kind of way. It's more like a, what will my neighbors think if they see this in an estate sale, you know? Like, it really makes you rethink your sex toy drawer, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so basically... I think it would be fun to do this. I know it sounds dark, but what I want to do is take this and along with getting rid of stuff, I want to leave things around, kind of like a post-funeral scavenger hunt, if you will. So I've like come up with some ideas. Like I plan to like leave like hobbies that my kids never knew I was into before. Like maybe an accordion, or a clown suit, sorry Nate, or, like, <laughs> or maybe like a furry suit or something like that. Or I also want to have like a friend write a bunch of letters from like a side family that my kids never knew about, make them go on ancestry, you know. My favorite is I want to leave a manila envelope just filled with newspaper clippings of people who are missing with no explanation whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Thank you guys for listening. I'm Lily Ann. Lily Evans, everybody! Richmond's number one woman of mystery. What a mysterious life she leads. And see you later, Nate Bechtel. Thanks for coming and clowning. We love both of these performers, just like we love our next one. You believe it or not, this is published author in the house, everybody, local published author. So please put your hands together for the very literary Mike Marr.